Today, I'm going to share five ways that changes to the U.S. news rankings will affect law school admissions. Hey, what's up, everybody? Steve Schwartz here from Outside Unplugged, joining you today to share how changes to the U.S. News Law School rankings earlier this year will affect law school admissions. Before I get into it, a little bit about LSAT Unplugged. We offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one coaching. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. So the reason I'm making this video is that a couple weeks ago, I got a great comment here on YouTube from someone asking about how the U.S. News rankings changes will affect law school admissions this cycle, particularly for non-traditional applicants, given the potential increase in the value of work experience for law school applications. I'll read the comment here in full, then share my thoughts. Julianne Rose writes, Thanks for another informative video. I always learn something useful. Could I suggest a video that talks about how this cycle's new U.S. news ranking criteria may impact non-trad applicants, specifically how work placement as a bigger chunk of the law school's ranking considerations may impact admissions? I see a lot of conversation about softs being considered more than ever before, but if there's evidence that says otherwise, it would be helpful to know. Thanks a lot for the consideration. So I thought this was an excellent, well-thought-out comment, something I've been thinking about as well, and I definitely have plenty of thoughts to share. In particular, I came up with five different ways I see the changes to the U.S. News ranking criteria changes impacting law school applicants beginning this cycle. First and foremost, I think about merit aid because, of course, one of the biggest benefits of getting an LSAT score and GPA above the medians of the schools to which you're applying is that they will have reason to throw merit aid at you in order to woo you to attend their school to help them boost their place in the rankings. Now that there's going to be more importance devoted to employment outcomes and bar passage rates, schools will, of course, be devoting more money to those outcomes and increasing those metrics in order to boost their place in the rankings, which means there may be less money devoted to applicants with high LSATs and GPAs. What this means is that you'll need an even higher LSAT score to get the same merit aid you would have gotten a couple of years back. may not sound great, but that's simply how it is. From your perspective as an applicant, however, the biggest way you can boost your chances to get into law school and get merit aid is to still get a high LSAT score and GPA. You simply may need higher numbers than you did in the past. So that's the first and one of the biggest ways I see the U.S. News ranking criteria changes impacting admissions. Secondly, I see more importance being devoted to interviews because they're a big part of what employers use when considering who to hire. You're looking at people skills and likability. Some schools do offer interviews, other schools do not. Even for schools that do not officially offer interviews, you can still ask for a Zoom informational interview to say you were reviewing their website, their school is your top choice, but you still have some questions. Could you set up a quick Zoom call to discuss further? Then, of course, you make a positive impression. They put a note in your file. The third factor I see here is that there will be more importance placed on work experience, meaning, of course, your resume, jobs you've had, internships you've had. Even if you're applying to law school direct from undergrad, you still want to have internships on your resume to show that you can function in the real world, not just in the undergrad environment. Now, the fourth way I see the rankings criteria changes impacting law school admissions is that LSAT scores will still be incredibly important because they are, of course, correlated with law school grades and bar passage rates, and bar passage rates are even more important than they were in the past. Same goes for the fifth criteria I see, which is GPA. GPA may have less weight in the rankings, but it still is correlated with law school grades and bar passage rates. And it's a great predictor of how you will perform on the bar exam a couple years back, since, of course, it relates to how you will do in law school as well. So you want to, of course, still have high LSAT and GPA, just like always, but you also want to devote more importance to interviews and work experience and internships, everything of that nature. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please share it with someone who needs to see it. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.